So I bought one of these coil gun guys. It's a three stage. I got it off uh, AliExpress probably, I don't know, I got it a while ago, I forgot about it. So it was a DIY kit, so I had to solder it. Works pretty good. You gotta do a little tracing out. The power supply that it comes with, basically the high voltage supply, basically a cheap ZVS driver, unregulated supply, so the output voltage in general is going to depend on the input voltage, but whoever came up with it set this up in a way where 12 volts seems pretty good, right? So basically feeding 12 volts into the 12 volt rail here, then you got your uh, high voltage in there for charging the cap, so... 12 volt battery lithium battery is just one i had laying around i kind of bootlegged it all together it's just sitting in here just for kind of you know demonstration purposes coming off your 12 volts and you're switching that and um you're switching that to the board that's going to be your indicator i guess that's the voltage it's actually just on the first stage right here in that one capacitor. Then you got this um, other momentary. And so that's just going to take that 12 volt power that you switched and run it into the ZVS driver. So far, I haven't really had any problems with it, like trying to lock up or anything like that. I've been able to just sort of kind of liberally, you know, tap it however I want. So that's already at 150. I'm going to discharge that one cat. Other ones still filled up though. So those are not discharged, and I'll, I'll have to run the uh, little ball bearing through. They give you, you know, a bunch of little ball bearings to shoot. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing you really can kill, I guess, is the uh, little NPN transistors. These are like 1200 volt, 40 amp, probably pulse. You know, I think it's 550, 600 amp pulse SCRs. You know, you got these guys. Which basically, transmitter and receiver, you can see I had to basically drill a little hole through here. I didn't do it very perfectly, but you know, whatever, it still seems to work pretty good. You can see sort of the spacing kind of go by the, the image that they put online. Each coil is kind of lined up to where it's right to the end of the uh, SCRs. Mine's a little bit off, but whatever. So long as you got your transmitter and receiver kind of lined up where they're supposed to be on the PCB like that, then it seems to be timed pretty good where your little ball bearing comes through and it blocks the light, switches this on, boom, that cap discharges, comes through, blocks the light, switches this on, boom. Works out pretty good. You can see how this is laid out. The uh, positive pin for the transmitter is right here on the left, but you can see it's just like a normal diode. So the bigger junction here is your negative, and the uh, smaller one would be the positive, right? So as far as the anode cathode, it's basically like a normal LED. Also, the longer leg was the negative, as usual. Uh, typically it's the other way around though as far as I'm usually seeing so the receiver is the opposite right the longer leg is the positive and uh, that's just how they normally are so basically when I first wired this up these two LEDs were always on the SCR gates were always on I was seeing like you know 250 milliamps one kind of easy way to just kind of see if they're on is uh, look at them through your cell phone, right? So anyway, once I got that all figured out, kind of worked out pretty good to where, see I just got this one little magnet right there. It's not really locking it in there too too hard. Don't want a whole lot of friction, but I don't think that would really matter anyway. There you go, 77 volts. Let's see what that does. It might come out slowly. Yeah, so came out a little slowly. All three stages discharge right there. Well, nothing special. But now, I'm going to set up a little target and uh, run it at, you know, 350, something like that, right? So once you really get up in the voltage, that's when you really see that action. Now I've basically got this guy, like, boresighted <laughs> in on that uh, cardboard box down there, right? And let's bring it up to, again, that's about 370. And at about 350, I'm going to pop it off. So down to about 350, and boom. You can see that it actually had a little bit of force behind it. And I actually got a little scared at first when I looked in here and didn't see the ball bearing because I got some uh, Tesla coils behind it. But it actually got stuck right there. 
in the other side. So while obviously, you know, that's nothing serious, is it, you know, it didn't go all the way through. Um, you know, I gotta wonder, it would probably zoom right through no problem at uh, 450 volts, right?